Um, John Jones, obviously, you knew coming in this was going to be a big headline. Um, you know, John Jones is a guy who is one of the, arguably, arguably one of the greatest of all time. I think this is the fight that could do it, though. Like, the Nganu fight is the fight that could actually set him apart as being even more uh, the greatest of all time. I think that's an opinionated rank, in my opinion. I think people are going to have their own greatest of all times for different reasons. So I don't think that's an official rank anyway, but... He will definitely be one of the pound for pound greatest if he beat Nganu definitely after this fight. Um, instead of waiting for the fight and, and, and trying to win that fight and get to that status, he's taking the approach of going against the UFC, going against Dana, which I think has never been a winnable option when it comes to making more money. And usually, like we got guys like Connor that's went against Dana and many other guys that went against Connor or went, went, went against Dana. The pay-per-view numbers won. You know, the, 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 the people in the seats and the people who paid the money won. Um, John Jones doesn't have those numbers. So I just think, you know, I agree that all fighters want to make more money. I've never been to that level where I could, like, you know, see pay-per-view numbers and, and fight for championships. But I just think his approach of going about it is wrong. And the whole cut me already kind of thing. I mean, he's definitely not going to make that money anywhere else. Who's going to pay him? I mean, we've seen him boast about the money he's made. You know, we've seen him talk about, you know, yeah, when I made my first 10 million, I was that age or something responding to somebody or, or something like that. So he's boasted about making good money. He definitely makes good money. Does he deserve to make more money? Maybe, you know, but I think if he won the fight against Nganu, he would have a hell of a lot more leverage to talk then uh, and try to get the money and be on the, the side of the UFC and being, a, you know, I'm kind of biased being close with the UFC and, and always being close with Dana, but just knowing Dana, I think going against Dana publicly is not just, that's just not the right answer, in my opinion. What do, what do you think about the whole overall situation? And do you think he's afraid of Nganu or do you think he just wants more money? And do you think he's going about it the right way? No, I, I, first and foremost, I don't think John Jones is afraid of anybody. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I think because John and I's fighting mentality, at least, is very similar. I would fight, I would fight Francis Ngannou right now. Right. Because that's just who I am. Um, so I, I don't believe John is af is afraid of Francis Ngannou. And honestly, to be very honest, I, I, I think that John knows exactly what I know. I know that John Jones beats Francis Ngannou, yeah. and I don't think it's going to be that exciting. Uh, I think that he picks at him from the outside. I think that he's too fast. I think he moves too well. His, his range management is too well, or is too good, rather. Um, and, and I just don't think Francis gets the chance to land that big shot. Um John Jones is not going to stand in front of him like Stipe did. Yeah. Stipe, again, another friend of mine, but, you know, Stipe will stand in front of you and, and, and be hittable. You know, in, in three fights, Stipe absorbed like 311 strikes mm. to Francis Ngannou's 45 strikes in three fights. Yeah. So, like, those numbers stand out to me, and that's yeah. that's just what Stipe is. John Jones is not that guy. Yeah. I have a really good knack at finding people's chins. Uh, I've had it my entire career, whether it's in the first round or the fifth round. Um, I've always been able to find them. And I had 25 minutes and I couldn't find John's. Uh, he's, he's hard to hit. Yeah. He is. He's, he's and, and I'm much faster and, and sneakier yeah. than Francis Ngannou is. Uh, by no means is powerful, but I, I, I do believe that I'm more technical and faster than Francis. And I couldn't get to it. So um, as far as the money thing, it, that, that kind of weirds me out. You know, Rashad Evans made a really good point to me uh, last weekend that, that kind of that really opened my eyes. Um, I don't know why John Jones gave up the title before these negotiations right. were already in place. So Lost like leverage. R Rashad, you know, Rashad made a, a great point. I never even thought of that. Like he gave away his bargaining chip yep. and now is crying about it. You know, yeah. I think that we all deserve to be paid more. Um, but like you said, John is not going to make that money anywhere else. Uh, there's nowhere else that has pay-per-view buys, you know, like John's base pay is like, you know, it's 500 grand to fight. But he makes all of his money on pay-per-view. And he does well enough to where he's not going to make that in Bellator. Um, he's not going to make that at one. He's not going to make that at, no way. you know, in the PFL. Nowhere. So he, he's kind of barking. But the, the, those of us in the know know that he's not going to make that anywhere else. And, and I, he's, been, he's been upset about this money thing for a long time. And he just goes about it the wrong way. I'm not, I'm not going to be the guy that's going to stand here and, and count John Jones' money. But – if I was going to be in negotiations, these these any any time I've negotiated with the UFC, they pay me way more than I would make anywhere else. Me too. Else. Yep. And it's it's these are closed door dinner and a drink conversations. Like I'm not going to go back and forth with you over a, with a manager. Right. Here's where I am. Here's where you are. Okay. Now me and my manager, let's go. Let's fly to Vegas. 
Let's have a conversation. Let's go to a dinner and let's talk about this and say, here's why I feel like I deserve this. And then they'll give you the same thing back. Here's, here's why we don't think you deserve that. And then some, at some point you're going to meet in the middle. Right. Like John Jones is never going to get what he wants. And the UFC is never going to pay him as little as they want. There's, there's always a middle ground. So he, he's just so offended by it, uh, you know, and, and that's always, he, he's just so emotional and that's, and that's John Jones, you know, and, and, you know, I think that part of that, you know, his emotional instability sometimes is, is what makes him so great. You know, if I'm, if, if I'm being very honest, yeah. I think that the things that make him as great as he is, I think sometimes hurt him in his personal life. Right. Uh, I think that we have all, I think all of us have kind of been, uh, been victims, you know, kind of to our own personalities. The things that make us such phenomenal fighters are sometimes not necessarily things that go so well in the real world. So I, I don't know, man, I, I, I want to see the fight. Yeah. Um, I think it's a, a crazy money maker. And, and I just, I, I, I you know, I just, again, he's one of those guys who just want to pull the side and be like, this is not it, man. <laughs> this is not the way to do it. If you can name one person that's ever gone, you know, with that public fight with the boss, and benefited from it, you know, I, I'd be willing to listen, but I can't think of anybody. Yeah. And, and, you know, you look, you have to look at guys, if you're in John's Jones or John Jones position, you have to look at guys that are making the money you want to make, right? You got to look at those guys and then find out how they're, they're doing it, how they did it. Like the Conor McGregor's or whatever, Habib and stuff. And they did it by winning fights. They did it by showing up. They did it by selling fights. I think in my opinion, you know, again, I'm, I'm very lower than you guys, but uh, in my opinion, I think he should sell the hell out of this Nganu fight and spend all of his time building this fight right now. And then if he wants to take a stand before, then he can take a stand and say, look, I want to, I want to fight this fight, but I need this amount of money. And then they negotiate. And then he does it either way because he's going to make more money in this fight because if he sells the fight, he's going to get pay-per-view buys. So whatever, whatever exactly. the points are behind, he's going to make more money, right? So, and it already, without even selling the fight, has the potential to be one of the biggest, you know, one of the biggest fights of the year. So... It's like if he spends a lot of time selling the fight, getting in it with Nganu, you know, showing training footage, talking about Nganu, I think that's going to be way more beneficial for him getting a bigger payday than battling UFC and going back and forth with Dana and then possibly sitting out making no money and then Derek Lewis gets to jump in and get that paycheck. You know what I'm saying? Well, and then what, what if he goes in and beats Francis, gets the title, now you have a bargaining chip. Right. Now sit Absolutely. down and be angry. You know, like sit down as the, as the champion with with the belt. That, that's a little bit right. more leverage, you, you know. That's a that's a big bargain. <laughs> yeah. shift. Now you can sit in that office at the UFC headquarters with a big twelve pound gold belt and say, "Now here's what I want." Right. And now you're no now you got a little bit of weight you can throw around with Dana, but you know, <laughs> as you know, we, we can talk about his accomplishments all the yeah, want, but at the end of the day, he's an unranked non champion right now. Yep. And the thing about it is, uh, Ngannou is the favorite by the odds. And I agree with you, though. I think John Jones can beat him. Um, I think the, the mm -hmm. reason people want to fight or watch the fight is Ngannou could also beat John Jones. I mean, he, he has that power to knock out anyone. Um, but the way he moves, his cardio, um, his fight IQ is not quite to where John Jones is. And I think John Jones is a smart fighter and will do what Francis did, but do it the, the right way. And, and I think Francis can beat him, too. I'm sorry, Sipe. Uh, I'm calling uh, Stipe Francis. I think Stipe can beat him as well. I, I think he could beat him, uh, you know, multiple times out of 10. I don't know exactly how many, but I think he could. I think he fought a bad fight. And, uh, you know, he obviously had the blueprint the first time. I think Ngannou did get better, but I'm with you on the fact that John Jones could win this fight, and I think that's the way to go. And instead of arguing with the UFC and causing a big stir, this kind of publicity, I think, is the same as, like, uh, after a fight and you lose and you complain about an injury. It's kind of that way to the public. And so it's kind of hurting his is tarnishing him versus helping him. Yeah, no, I, I agree, man. And, and all of it is just distracting from the fact that, that, you know, it's, it's distracting everyone from what John really wants everyone to say. Everyone wants John, John Jones wants everyone to say that he is the greatest of all time. Listen, we all know me and John Jones don't get along that well, but I have no problem saying that he probably is, at least in my opinion, the greatest of all time. Uh, but all this stuff is distracting from that. If you're the greatest of all time, yeah, we're not. This isn't like John's getting ten and ten. You know what I mean? Like he's yeah. he's already pay per view. He's gonna make millions and millions and millions. Of Wasn't there any beats him? And John wants to complain about being underpaid. You know, I'll. Uh, it's one of those situations. Like I'll, I'll sit down and shut up and just let you go get paid. I guess. Like, but right now, you know, you're kind of moving up. You haven't fought in a while. There's a little bit of controversy, and you know, in your last you know couple fights. Um, I, I just think that John needs to remind everyone who he is. 
uh, and then you can have some of those conversations. Real quick, real quick, real quick, with Mike Swift.